Love them or hate them, 30 Seconds to Mars has managed to leave their own unique mark in the alt-rock sphere. So how did fame and success put the band millions of dollars into debt? We heard firecrackers, or what we thought were firecrackers. The world watched the news unfold in a sort of shocked horror on November 13, 2015. That was when a series of terrorist attacks were carried out across Paris, killing 130 people and injuring many more. Targets included a sold-out concert at the Bataclan Concert Hall. Performing that night were the Eagles of Death Metal. And even as events unfolded, Jared Leto took to social media to share his thoughts. Not only had 30 Seconds to Mars just performed at the Bataclan, but they'd gotten word that some of their former crew and touring musicians who were putting on the show that night were unaccounted for. That included Matt McJunkins, a bassist who had toured with 30 Seconds to Mars. The day after the terrorist attacks, Reuters reported that McJunkins was the last of the band's musicians to be found alive in the post-attack chaos. Several associated with the band, however, were killed, including merch manager Nick Alexander and a music exec named Thomas Ayad. The American Music Awards took place just a few days after the attacks, and Leto led the tributes to the victims, including Ayad, a longtime colleague. Leto summed up his thoughts by reading from a letter written by the husband of another victim. You will not have my hatred. You are asking for it. But responding with hatred and anger is falling victim to the same ignorance and hatred that has made you what you are. When 30 Seconds to Mars guitarist Tomo Milicevic's sister Ivana sat down for a 2013 interview with Dame, it was at their family's restaurant, the Roxbury Cafe. The interview revealed that the three siblings, Tomo, Ivana, and Philip, were the first in the family to head to California, convincing their parents to trade their Michigan Dunkin' Donuts for the West Coast restaurant where Philip was working. In August 2018, Ivana posted a tribute to Philip on Instagram. Two years had passed since he died suddenly of an aortic dissection, or a tearing of the inner layer of the aorta. It's most common in older men, but Filip Milicevic died at just 33 years old. Ivana wrote in her post, He loved Tomo from Earth with all of his big heart since he was born. I miss him so much. I miss him. He is. A few months before her post, Tomo announced via Twitter that he was leaving 30 seconds to Mars. He didn't go into details at the time, but stressed that he still had nothing but love for the other members of the band. He wrote, in part, I'll cherish the moments we had together, and I'll have love in my heart every time I think of those days until I draw my final breath. While it might seem like a band as successful as 30 Seconds to Mars would have a bank account that's as full as the arenas they play, Jared Leto says that's not the case. In fact, he told Forbes in 2013, We had more success than we ever dreamed. We never expected to get rich, but we certainly didn't expect to be millions of dollars in debt. How does that even happen? That's what he wanted to know too, so 30 Seconds to Mars spearheaded Artifact, an expose of the music industry that explained how record deals were set up to funnel the majority of revenue to corporations while the artists got a relative pittance. The documentary is a scathing condemnation of the greed and corruption that seemed rampant in the music industry, all while artists were forced deeper and deeper in debt. They basically told us to shut up and go make another album. Leto made it clear that he wasn't going after the institution of record companies, but the corruption that often came along with them. For instance, when it came time to pay out artists' laughable earnings from music streaming, Leto and the band ended up filming around 40,000 hours of behind-the-scenes footage. He shared what he wanted to see come out of the documentary with The Hollywood Reporter, saying, I think artists don't have a seat at the table when it comes to being part of the conversation about the future of technology and creativity. There's a blueprint being made, and artists should be part of the design. In 2005, the New York Post ran a story with some serious allegations. The tabloid claimed that a source close to 30 Seconds to Mars had come forward to say that Jared Leto was well known behind the scenes for inviting teenage girls backstage at shows. The source alleged, He's a serial texter. He is constantly texting the 16- and 17-year-old girls. It's really kind of creepy. While anonymous sources talking to the New York Post should be taken with a grain of salt, Newsweek echoed the concerns amid more rumors and gossip in 2022. They referred not only to the accusations in the Post, but a tweet from Dylan Sprouse in which the actor asked about Leto's success rate now that he had, quote, slid into the DMs of every female model aged 18 to 25. Director James Gunn chimed in with a disturbing and now deleted response. He starts at 18 on the internet? <laughs> Similarly, Gawker also detailed a series of reports, including blog posts and tweets that have since been deleted, outright accusing Leto of assaults and coercion over the years. The outlet stresses that no formal charges have been brought and nothing has gone to court, 
but also that the accusations are a serious matter. If you or anyone you know has been a victim of sexual assault, help is available. Visit the Rape, Abuse and Incest National Network website or contact Rain's National Helpline at 1-800-656-HOPE-4673.